Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our integration series, so we're talking about integration by parts and how we can use that with solids of revolution. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Of course, we're gonna go ahead and start out with a problem. So we have let r be the region bounded by y equals the natural log of x, the x-axis, and the line x equals e. So I already drew that out for us, that's the first image. And so we're finding that area, and then we're using that area and we're revolving it around the x-axis. So I drew that in the second photo. Photo, beautiful 3D shape, and we're going to talk about how we want to solve for the volume. So let's go ahead and first take our circle. So if I were to slice this shape, we would get a nice solid circle that looks like this. We can find the area of the circle, right, using pi r squared. So let's see what the radius is going to be. If we start at the x-axis, we extend all the way up to our function, which our function is equal to the natural log of x. So here, here we get r is equal to the natural log of x. So area is equal to pi times natural log of x quantity squared. This is different from the natural log of x squared, which can be rewritten as 2 times the natural log of x. That is not the same as the natural log of x quantity squared. I can definitely see students doing that on an exam, so just be careful with that. And in order to find the volume, we're going to add up all of these areas between 1 going up to e. Okay, so now this is where the integration by parts is going to come in. Surprise, surprise. So we are going to set u equal to something, and we're going to set dv equal to the leftovers, which is going to, of course, involve the dx. So the question is, do we know how to integrate natural log of x quantity squared? No, we don't, which means that we're just going to go ahead and take the derivative of it. If we knew how to integrate it, we would just integrate it straight, right? So here we get du is equal to, and that becomes 2 times the natural log of x, right? I'm just using chain rule derivative of the outside at the inside, divided, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, so I can rewrite this as 2 times the natural log of x divided by x. And of course, we need our dx. And that means our dv is just equal to dx. If you want to include that pi in there, you totally could. I'm going to leave the pi as a scalar multiple on the outside. So here we get v is equal to x. So let's go ahead and set up integration by parts. So we get volume is equal to, do not forget that scalar of pi, and we get uv raised, so u times v. And this is a definite integral, so we're evaluating this between 1 and e, minus voodoo, so v times du. So the integral and do not forget that pi, I almost forgot it right there, times 2 natural log of x divided by x dx. Okay, so let's go ahead and rewrite this. So we get v is equal to pi times x times the natural log of x quantity squared between 1 and e minus, we can take out 2 pi. Those x's cancel out, which is very nice, and here we just have the integral of x dx. In my original video on integration by parts, I already solved for the integral of natural log of x, so I'm going to go ahead and use the identity. If you want to see how that solved out, you can go ahead and check out that video, but I'm just going to go ahead and replace what it's equal to. So I haven't plugged in the bounds on this yet. Some people like to wait to the end to do it because then they can combine it all, but whatever your heart desires. So here we get 2 pi, and this becomes x times the natural log of x minus x between 1 and e. So what I mean by that is actually we could set this the whole thing up as pi x quantity natural log of x squared minus 2 pi, and that becomes x natural log of x plus, do not forget to multiply this in, so I'm distributing it, 2 pi x, and we can evaluate the whole thing between 1 and e. It does not make a difference if you evaluate some parts at the beginning, some parts at the end, and add them together, or, do, or if you do it all at the end like this. You're going to end up with the same answer. So here, let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. We're going to need lots of space for this, so I'm going to plug in e first. Okay, let's simplify some of these. So the natural log of e is just equal to 1. Natural log of e is equal to 1. Okay, and then natural log of 1, that's equal to 0. So that means the whole term goes away. Natural log of 1 is equal to 0. And so here we're just left with that 2 pi. So I don't want to forget that, so I'm going to highlight it. Knowing me, I'd probably forget it. Okay, and then notice something else, actually. This becomes negative 2 pi e plus 2 pi e. So actually, those cancel each other out as well. So this actually simplifies really nicely. We get that pi e, and then minus, because there's a minus out here, minus 2 pi. And see, I would have forgot about it if I didn't highlight it. And that right there represents the volume of this solid right there. 
We're going to do it again. Find the volume of the solid generated when the region bounded between cosine of x and the x-axis on the interval 0 to pi over 2 is revolved about the y-axis. So here I drew it out. We have the 2D vision right here of cosine of x, and then we revolve that whole thing around the y-axis, and we get this little dome right here. And I don't think that's completely symmetrical, but, you know, just pretend it is. We all have great imaginations. So here, what we want to go ahead and do is take a cross-section, which I already drew in that cross-section right here. But we know that this is going to be a solid circle. So let's go ahead and talk about what the radius of our circle is going to be. I like extending from our axis of rotation out to our function. So notice here that this is going to be a length of x, whatever x value this is. And we have that y is equal to cosine of x. So we want to go ahead and solve for x. We get inverse cosine of y is equal to x. So here we have our radius is equal to inverse cosine. So this helps us find the area formula, I guess, for all our circles. So that becomes pi cosine negative 1 y quantity squared. Okay, so now what we're wanting to do to find the volume is we're going to add up all of the areas of the cross section. And this is going to be between the lower bound of our y and the upper bound of our y. So it's not going to be between 0 and pi over 2 because that's our bounds for x. This is going to go all the way up to 1. So this is going to be between 0 and 1 of pi of that whole thing. And we're integrating this in terms of y. So, you know, given what kind of video we're doing, you know we're going to go ahead and set up integration by parts. So we're going to have u, we're going to have dv. Now, if we knew how to integrate this thing, we wouldn't have to do integration by parts, which means we're going to go ahead and take the derivative of it. And that means our leftover, and if you want, I'm just going to add the pi in there today. Why not? For funsies. Okay, so let's do this thing, du, this is going to be fun. We're going to do the derivative of the outside at the inside. So we get 2 times inverse cosine of y times negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. So we get that whole fat thing. And then here we get v when we integrate both sides. It's just equal to pi y. How nice. Okay, so let's do this thing. We get uv raised, so we get cosine inverse cosine of y squared times v which is pi y this is being evaluated between 0 and 1 minus voodoo okay so we get the integral of v which is pi y times du okay so i'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this first part because i don't want to rewrite it and we're going to go ahead and simplify the second part. So there's a negative there. So that's going to become a plus. And let's go ahead and bring out these constant multiples. So we have a 2. Oh, a, oh here. And a pi. I need to read something else. So 2 pi times the integral of y times inverse cosine of y times its derivative. I'm sorry. I started writing with x. That's 1 minus y squared dy. Sorry, that was out of habit. I'll fix that. Okay. So the question is. What do we do now? And boy, do I have an answer for you. I'm going to go ahead and use u substitution. So I'm going to go ahead and set, and I'm not going to use the letter u because we're doing integration by parts. So that might be a bit confusing to have u and v and then also u. So let's go, you know, let's just set it equal to z. Doesn't matter what variable you use here because we already talked about how we have inverse cosine and we also have its derivative. And so dz is going to be equal to negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus y squared dy. And here we already have that. If you wanted, you could have just left that negative with it. And so this would have been minus whatever your heart desires there. But notice we're going to have this leftover y. So let's go ahead and solve for y. We have that z is equal to inverse cosine of y. Or if I take cosine of both sides, I get cosine of z is equal to y. So let's go ahead and see what happens there. I'm going to copy and paste this. We left that as a minus 2 pi so we could replace things. y is equal to cosine of z. We set inverse cosine of y equal to z. And then finally, this whole thing is equal to dz. And so we can go ahead and replace that with dz. So our last step is to also change the bounds because we're integrating this between 0 and 1, right? So here we have our upper bound y is equal to 1. So here we can solve for z, and we get inverse cosine of 1, which occurs at 0. Here we also have y is equal to 0 for our lower bound, so z is equal to inverse cosine of 0, which occurs at pi over 2. 
remember that we have to take into account what interval we're working in. So we're working in zero to pi over two. So that's why my bounds are equal to that. And so now this is gonna be between a lower bound of pi over two and an upper bound of zero. So looking at this, guess what we're gonna use? Integration by parts. So here I'm gonna set u equal to z, which is why I didn't set you know, u equal to u for u substitution. And dv is gonna be equal to cosine of z dz. Okay, so here when we take the derivative, we get du is equal to dz, which is very nice. And we get v is equal to sine of z when we integrate both sides. So let's go ahead and set this up. Again, I'm not evaluating it yet, but you know, I will in the end. Minus two pi. And then here we got uv. So we get um, z times sine of z. And we're evaluating this between our new bounds of pi over two and zero. And then that becomes a plus two pi because there's already that negative two pi on the outside. And then we get v, which is sine of z, times dz between pi over two and zero. And that right there, we know how to take the antiderivative of. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. So here we get plus two pi and the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So that's actually gonna be a minus right there minus cosine of z between pi over two and zero. And if you wanted, you can combine this whole thing to be evaluated between pi over two and zero because they have the same bounds. Okay, let's do lots of evaluations here. We're gonna spread out for this. So first we're gonna do the um, first part of this between zero and one. So I'm gonna plug in upper minus lower. So that's the first part plus, and now we're gonna do that whole thing upper minus lower. So we're gonna do zero and pi over two. Okay, that barely fit on my page, but here we got it. Let's simplify some of this. So this whole thing is multiplied by zero, so it goes away. This whole thing is multiplied by zero, so it goes away. Cosine of zero is equal to one, so that's just equal to two pi. Let's see, sine of pi over two is equal to one. Cosine of pi over two is equal to zero, so that whole term goes away. Notice here that this two divided by two cancels out. Let's see, what else cancels out? Inverse cosine at one, so the angle where it's at one is equal to zero. Oh, wow, so that whole thing goes away. So here we end up with, what do we even have left over? That's gone, that's gone. Oh, we have a negative two pi over here, and it's a plus on the outside. And then we have minus, and that becomes pi squared. So we get negative two pi minus negative pi squared becomes plus pi squared. So if you wanted to rewrite that, you get pi squared minus two pi. Wow, so that whole thing turns into pi squared minus two pi and that is our volume of this region right here. So that's all I have for us today. If you enjoyed this video, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlists that are linked down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.